Welcome, UC Bearcats, to Bearcats on the Prowl, part of the Grooming Truth Radio Network. As always, I'm James Ernest, along with me, our host, Mark Fightmaster. Mark, what have the Bearcats been up to? Well, James, the season came to an end. Um, and, you know, quite, on, quite honestly, much like you and I both predicted, um, you know, the uh, game against UCLA was a tough one. Uh, they actually played one great half of basketball, an outstanding half. Uh, they controlled the tempo of the game. You know, they held Lonzo Ball back and all that fun stuff. But then uh, second half, it was just uh, UCLA imposed their will. You know, first half, UC imposed their will. Second half, UCLA imposed their will and ended up winning because of it. So, you know, disappointing end, but, uh, man, it was a great season. You know, um, that's something that really bugs me about eh, Cincinnati fans in general. You know, they don't want to look at the uh, at the bigger picture. They're all worried about oh, what happens in March. But I mean, this team was thirty and six. You know, I'd, so it was it was a great season. And I don't want to get off on a tangent right away. But uh, you know, great season. They played a great game against Kansas State. They uh, dominated the game against Kansas State who is actually a, a good Big 12 team. So, so yeah, you know, ended on a sour note, but I, I think we have a lot to look forward to. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, you know, for example, Cumberland had, a, you know, that great game against UCLA, you know. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of good future uh, potential that's going on there. Um, you know, I mean, the Kansas City game, you know, same thing. They did really well. Uh, Kill Kane, I mean, he was doing excellent, 7 of 10, oh, yeah. 10 from three-point, uh, makes all his free throws. I mean, yeah, you can't ask for any more out of him in that game. Actually, pretty much everyone stepped it up in that game, yep. shooting-wise. I mean, they were 62%. The problem mm-hmm. is that UCLA game was like 40, 48%, something like that. So right. if you're not shooting well against UCLA, it's not going to go well. I mean, they're just too good of a team. And like you said, I mean, with Ball, I mean, he is just so darn talented. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and hate his dad as much as I do. That kid's good. Yeah. You know, I mean, he is – he can flat out play. And, and now, you know, I mean, NCAA won't have to worry about him next year because he's pretty much one and done, at least according to his dad. So, you know, it, it's just he, – he's a good player. He is a very good player. And you're right, that shooting percentage drop. That was the difference there. You know, if UC could, could have shot 62% the whole game against UCLA, you know, different story. We might be talking about the Sweet 16. So, right. and, you know, they started forcing things towards the end. So, and that happens when you're down. And when you're down, eh, 10 points. So. Very true. I mean, that yeah, second half, yeah, UC was, you know, about 40-something percent. And UCLA was 60-something percent. I mean, it's just exactly. you're not – beat a team if they were shooting that much better than you. That especially, I mean, you know, getting blocked five dang times during the game. I mean, the interior yeah. defense was just too yeah. darn for uh, UCLA. Because unfortunately, yeah. Kyle Washington, he had a bad game. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, 20%, you know, from shooting. Right. You, you can't have that from your interior players. But I get it if an outside guy is not hitting the shots because, you know, he's taking the shots. But when you're on the inside like that, you've you got to make them. Right, you know, and and I, I don't want a one bad game to take away from the season he had. Kyle Washington had an excellent season, but as things started to wear on, you could see the fatigue getting to him. I think, yeah, this is my opinion um, that you could see him getting tired. And it happened in you know last couple games of the year, and then in the AAC tournament, and then in, in the NCAA tournament. And, and, um, you know, we can't forget, he sat out an entire year. So, yeah. you know, he's, you know, he was used to, you know, he, he's a college athlete. He's in shape. But, you know, that's a pounding that they take. I mean, they, they beat on each other in practice and then the games. So I think he was a little tired and as the year wore on, and I think we saw the ultimate effects of that in that UCLA game. Mm-hmm. Very true. I mean, beating up on, you know, Clark and, and Brooks, you know, and all. But the bright side is, with having Cumberland and Brooks and uh, Justin Jennifer, who are all going to be better next year, 
and if uh, I mean they're already solid players, it, it'll be interesting mm-hmm. to see how that the progression goes there. Yeah, I think there's a lot to look forward to next year. Um, I took an hour last night in there, actually earlier today, and listened to the podcast of uh, Mick Cronin's radio show from 700 last night. They graduate three guys, and one of them is a (laughs) walk-on. You know, I mean, and he talked about how nobody wants to schedule them now because of that. And and it's interesting. He actually used the term collusion when talking about the big five conferences and uh, and not wanting to schedule them, which, I mean, look at it. You are a power five conference. Are you going to schedule, you know, if you've got a chance to schedule an out-of-conference game, are you going to schedule, uh, let's, let me just throw, like uh, an Albany or a Middle Tennessee State or are you going to schedule UC? <laughs> you know, one of those things is not like the other next year. And UC is going to create a lot of problems for a lot of people. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm definitely going with uh, Albany out of those picks. But yeah. I don't know how, yeah. how much Middle Tennessee is bringing back, but they, they actually had a pretty good tournament run. I hate to yeah. say it because I used to be a big uh, Western fan, so, of course, Middle Tennessee and uh, Middle State and the Western – don't like each other, but uh, yeah, gotcha. they they had a good run in the tournament. I have to, you know, I was proud of them. Uh, that, yep. you know, they were they were getting out there. But I know what you mean. You see, yeah. I mean, you see is one of those. Basically, they're a Power Five conference team that's just not in a Power Five Five conference yet. Exactly, they're, and, and we we've, we've talked about that a lot. You know, them SMU. You know, there's a couple other teams, Utah, I mean, mm-hmm. that are definitely deserving of being considered that next level up that, mm-hmm. unfortunately, due to uh, waiting on conference realignment, aren't there yet, but will be. I agree with you 100%. So, exactly. Do you remember who the other two that were graduating were? Um, Troy Copain, Kevin Johnson, and the walk-on, uh, okay. Tobler. Okay, so it's the the guards basically. So we'll, yeah, yeah, it's, it's the two guards and, and the bench player. Okay, so we'll still have Jacob Evans at point, Justin Jennifer at point, or I mean at two or vice versa. So we'll have the two guards yeah. there. Yeah. Well, and then don't forget Kane Broom. Uh, kid was a transfer and he had to sit out. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. That that does tend to happen. Yeah, when they do the transfer, it's hard to remember them sometimes. So yeah. So that will give us still three guards next year. And uh, oh, yeah. Cumberland can play guard and forward because, I mean, he's a big mm-hmm. forward. So, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That'll be- yeah. And, and, then, and then, I mean, you're bringing back Washington and Clark. And yeah, then you've got another year on Niger, Niger Brooks. And another – and, gosh, who's the other kid? His name's escaping me. Um, oh, shoot, the other inside player. Um Number thirteen, and I can't remember his name. But you get another year on both oh, of those. Scott. Guys. Trey Scott. Yeah, Trey Scott. You get another year on both of those guys. I mean, th- this team's set up well. Yeah, I agree with you hundred percent. I was going to say this. Uh, make it end up doing something kind of like what Gonzaga's done this year, where you know going undefeated or going pretty close to undefeated during the uh, regular season. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, you know, Utah will be, you know. They might not be UConn again, but they're they're always going to be in the picture. And that's the mm-hmm. new same thing is always going to be a challenge. But bringing, like you said, bringing everybody back except for two players, it's it's hard not to uh, have a lot of faith in the future. It's kind of the same thing at uh, Northern. Northern has uh, one player uh, that's you know that's uh, of uh, note leaving uh, Cole Murray, and then after that, it's uh, like a walk on or two. So, yep. Yeah. So, it, yeah, they've got, you know, a big future ahead of them. Same with UC. So, that'd be nice. Hopefully next year uh, UC will get a uh, closer spot in Sacramento. Yeah, definitely. Maybe in the same time zone. <laughs> um, no, but, it, you know, it's, it's kind of the way things are for the uh, – you want to talk about the basketball program, you know, but you can say the same thing about the football program. You know, we are, we are in a situation with UC sports right now where we're not having to stretch and worry about where we're going to get players for now, you know, um, because we've got young guys 
who are uh, going to be taking charge. Yep. So it, it, it's a uh, it's a very good situation to be in. Uh, so I I'm optimistic. I'm super <laughs> optimistic about uh, the basketball program, and I'm optimistic about the the, the football program. And I think we have a reason to be. Um, oh, that's true. You know, w- with Mick uh, doing what I think was his best coaching job this year. Um, you know, building on that next year with a young group, uh, I I have no reason to be anything but extremely optimistic about the future of this basketball program. I agree with you. I mean, it is hard to, to find a, anything bad that's going on with the program. I mean, they've um, been progressing. They've been getting a good young talent. And you're right, he's been coaching them up the right way. So there's there's nothing bad to say about uh, you see sports other than, you know, like you said, the one complaint you can actually make is the conference, which UC can't do anything about that because, I mean, mm-hmm. the Big 12, uh, for some reason, uh, enjoys getting uh, blocked for the uh, postseason uh, Big yeah. or, you know, the four for football. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's their call on that one. You know, I mean, yep. they're, they got blocked because they don't have a postseason champion. Well, exactly. Yeah, and you're going to not have a postseason champion until you get 12 teams in the Big 12. So, right. And, 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 that fault. Yeah. yeah, and we've talked about the scope of college sports in general often on our show. I just think, you know, eventually UC will be in, in what is considered one of the Power Five conferences because, like we've talked, I think those Power Five conferences are going to start having 15 and 20 teams. Um, so, and, and that's one of the big things that Mick was talking about with scheduling next year because the ACC is going to 20 conference games instead of the 16, I believe, they've had in oh, the past. Wow. Yeah. So that's really going to cut down on games that they're able to play outside of their conference, and that's really going to cut down on the opponents that they want to play because if they're playing 20 ACC games, and you're going to have a 30, 32 game schedule. You're not going to want to play Cincinnati. You're not going to want to play SMU. You're not going to want to play, you know, Houston at times or UConn. You know, you're going to want to stick with the extremely low uh, conferences where you're almost guaranteed to win, or you're going to go for the bigger games like UK or, you know, you, you get your North Carolina uh, UK or UK UCLA that kind of thing. Yep. I know what you mean. They've already got um, a game set up, and I don't know which two are playing each other, or if it's like a round-robin setup. But in uh, Indianapolis in 2018, it's uh, UK, Michigan State, Duke, and Kansas are having some yep. type of a, event up there. So I don't know what you mean. They're either going to go one of the two extremes, but they're not going to have a non-power conference team beat them. They're going to make sure of that. I mean, if they happen to lose to a power five, not that they want that to happen, but they would, uh, it would you know, they're going to be smart and not schedule, you know, somebody, like you said, you see your couple of the other teams we named, because that will have a bigger blemish, even though they can be just as good, if not a better team, than uh, some of the other conferences out there. Exactly. So, and, and unfortunately, and this is the only negative I have to say about UC sports, is they're, they're stuck in this rut for a while. They're going to be stuck in this conference, and they're going to have to – do something to make the big boys take notice. And mm-hmm. like they did when they were in the Big East. You know, it's just, just so happened that the Big East fell apart and decided it wanted to, be, you know, go whichever direction it went, which that still baffles me. But it was a case of they did there what they needed to. Now they have to do the same thing in the AAC. Very true. Yeah, I mean, same with heck, even back in the day with Conference USA. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. After winning so much there, I mean, that's how they got into the Big East. So, yeah, they yeah. just got to keep up with those kind of things. Right. And, and, and it's cyclical. You know, I mean, college sports are, are cyclical unless you are one of the Power Fives. You know, uh, unless you are an Ohio State or a Duke or a North Carolina or a Kentucky. You know, I mean, if we're going to talk strictly basketball, you go with those last ones. You know, if we're going to talk about football, you think in Ohio State, Michigan, Oregon, you know, the big boys. Um, so, and what comes around goes around. UC had some success. They've been through the downtime now. Uh, let's see what happens. Very true. Uh, let's see. 
switching gears because, I mean, yeah. obviously we covered the heck out of the UC uh, basketball. They had a great year. They got a bright future ahead. Uh, like you mentioned uh, before we started the show, football. And you mentioned mm-hmm. kind of, we mentioned a little bit about that. They started practicing, and I believe it is going to be on April 14th. They're going to have their spring ball game. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of uh, neat things that the fans can check out and, uh, you know, learn about, more about UC. Football. Yeah, and and I think that, uh, well, and, and I think we've talked about this before, and it may have, I don't think it was last week, I think we were talking about all basketball, but Luke Fickle is getting the brand out there, the UC brand, and if they can create an atmosphere where people want to come and watch, then more eyes on them means more money and better recruiting eventually, and I think uh, – He's got things pointed the right way after the uh, Tuberville debacle. Very true. I was going to say, uh, I don't know, though. We might have to worry about it. I mean, Fickle might decide to run for mayor or something. You know? Hey. You never know. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, he probably, he could probably, he'd probably a better candidate than any of the ones we have. <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah. I mean, he is he, he's doing things the right way. He's – and. And, you know, I, I'm, this is coming from an Ohio State fan, so take it for what it's worth. But he has learned from Urban Meyer. He has learned from uh, Jim Trestle how to build a program. Yeah. And I, I think this is a great step for him to come to, and I hate saying this, but a lower tier of college football, um, you know, a non-Power 5, and he's going to build it up. And, you know, I'd love to see him stay, but I think ultimately you and I and most of our listeners know this is going to be a stepping stone for him. But like we've said in the past, you want someone who's going to treat it like a stepping stone uh, because they want to, you know, that means they're hungry to get a good good job to get noticed. So I think uh, he's got things going the right direction. Let's see him build on it. Um, I'm circling that Michigan game, man. I, I want to see UC go up there and beat them. And then that could be the moment where the eyes are opened, like, okay, this team can be good. Oh, very true. So. Yeah, if they, yeah, if they go out there and they beat Michigan, that would be huge. Because, I mean, the Austin P, Austin P, they should be able to beat them, no yeah. problem. Uh, Michigan, yeah, that's going to be a tough game. Ohio State, I mean, Ohio State, I mean uh, Miami of Ohio, they always play Miami tough. But, that, you know, they always win. You know, Miami, yeah. Miami gets in the game, but they always end up figuring yep. a way to beat them. Navy, Navy's got that weird offense. That's the one that actually really concerns me. Just yeah, the one, triple the option. Them, yeah, like the option. Yeah, that's just. Yeah, and, really and when we obviously when we get into football season, I, I'll talk. I can talk more about stopping it because I used to coach it. Um, you know, but it's uh, it's effective when it's run well. Um, so, but eh, you know, I don't want to get into X's and O's now. Uh, I, I'll tell you. What was what was that? I agree with you. Uh, I know what yeah. you mean. Yeah, I was going to say it's a little early for uh, football mm, breaking it down and all, but yeah, it yeah, it's just one of those things that uh, you're right. This could be a really nice season for them, and even if they don't do anything overwhelming, as long as they do enough to you know get no bowl game would be nice. Yeah, it, you know what it is. It, it's it is uh, getting the bad taste out of your mouth. You know, it's going to be one of those a refresher season, if you will, you know, um, take the, take what's left of the Tuberville era, if we want to call it that, and just uh, advance and make a name for themselves. And that's why that Michigan game, even just going up there and giving them a game will, uh, will get eyes on them and will make the people here in town realize this kid knows what he's doing and the, the program is in good hands. I agree with you. I mean, it's one of those ones, Kind of like Northern versus UK, you know that uh, you know no one going into it is really you know thinking they're going to win. But you're right. I mean, mm-hmm. if they can give them a game, that can get a lot of attention. That can get other things going in the right direction. Get those better recruits in, and yeah. uh, just keep building on it. Well, and, and I'll tell you what, you uh, KU opened some eyes in that UK game. You know, I mean, they were down. Well, they ended up losing by nine, if I'm correct, right? It was mm-hmm. was it nine or seven? Um, not whatever. But they, okay, they were down big, but they never gave up, and they played hard. And that, you know, I respect that. And I think 
people in Cincinnati respect that kind of effort. And, and so I think if the football program can show that kind of effort, it's really going to make, make some people happy. Very true. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those things, like you said, they just need to, if they can go out there and do that and show they belong, that'll mm-hmm. get that, yeah, like you said, a taste out of them. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I mean, because like always, I like changing up a lot. Uh, we got the baseball to cover before uh, we end the show. Um, yeah. They're now around 500, so that's good because they were uh, they started off losing a little bit there. They mm-hmm. were on a streak, uh, losing Northwestern State, that kind of thing. Uh, College mm-hmm. of Charleston was having issues with it, but it's kind of funny they're bouncing back against. They went one for three against the number 25 team in the country, and uh, let's see who where was it? Oh, oh it's on here. there it is. They beat the number one team in the country, the Louisville Cardinals which I right. did not know they were the number one team in the country. So yeah. I'm going to have to get credentials and go check that out down there because I know at one point NKU is supposed to go down to Louisville Bat Stadium and play uh, the Cardinals down there. So that'll be, that'll be neat to see. And that game was tonight, if I remember correctly, uh, the one that UC won. Or, yeah, yeah, 6-3 to yeah. Three tonight. You're right, yeah. Yeah. So, hey, you know, baseball, it's such a, such a funny sport. You know, we talk about – football and basketball being team sports and, and baseball is a team sport, but you know, you get a hot pitcher or you get a hot hitter and uh, you know, it, it, it can take over a game. So it's awesome that they beat the number one team in the country. So let's see if they can keep it up. Very true. Yeah. Cause tomorrow they got Indiana and then the next couple of days after that, they got Northern. So, you know, they okay. got, yeah, they got some interesting ones. They got UK, uh, down there in Lexington, Memphis, mm-hmm. they're going to have some good games coming up. So it's definitely right. one of those things that are worth checking out. And the prices for the for the games are only like five bucks. I mean, it's very yeah. reasonable ticket pricing. Or for like the whole season, I think it was like thirty dollars, something like that. So it equals to be like a dollar or two a game. I mean, it's just exactly. how good of a deal. If you know you're a baseball fan, you're a UC fan, you know, I mean, shoot even mm-hmm. the they're cheaper than the Freedom. I, I, I that's, yeah. that's that's just crazy to say. Somebody's less expensive than the Freedom. <laughs> so yeah. Yep. So definitely. Hopefully the fans will come out and check that out. Mark Shot yeah. Stadium is a great stadium. I mean, it's just one of those mm-hmm. things we're doing. But that's cool. Um, any final thoughts? No, you know, James. I think I think we got a lot of reasons to be optimistic um, about UC sports. And and if I can take a second, you know, the people who are comparing Mick Cronin to Marvin Lewis and, and, and that stuff, stop. It's not you, – you're not correct. And, and I hate saying that because I respect everyone's opinion. But Mick is a very good coach. And Mick is the right coach here. He is the right coach for right now. Uh, and when the time comes that he's not, they'll take care of it. But comparing the Cronin era to the Huggins era, don't do it. it it's no, not it's the not same. Fair. Yeah, it's not the same, and it's not fair to Mick, and it's not fair to these kids, because you know, enjoy the season for what it was. It was thirty and six. We had some outstanding games. You know, we we had some duds. We had the UCF loss. You know, we had the two losses to SMU. That's, you know, those were bad games. But we had the Marshall game where they came back from being down, what, 20 and winning oh, yeah, in overtime. That was an amazing game, yeah, because, yeah, yeah it was like that one. I mean, Marshall, just that first half, couldn't yep. miss. I mean, seriously, they right. could have put their hands in front of their eyes. They were just hitting everything. It was uncanny mm-hmm. just how bad exactly. they could be down. And then, yeah, like you said, it was like a 20-point gap and mm-hmm. for them to come back. Um, yeah, because when they started coming back, you're like, no, nah, I mean, it's just too far of a, far of a deficit. They're not coming back on this. And then eventually, you get close enough, you're like, yeah, we can see over time, you know, that kind of yep. thing. But, yeah, it was, I mean, it was unbelievable. Yeah, so, I mean, you had that moment. You know, you had the, uh, was that uh, Tulsa? I think it was Tulsa, where we were interviewing Bobby Brandon. And they were down 12 points with four minutes to go and ended up making it up and winning the game. You know, so enjoy the season for what it was. It was a fun ride. You know, one team is going to win the championship. One team. 
Same way with right. football. One team's going to win. It's the same way with Bengals fans. One team's going to win the Super Bowl. So let's enjoy the ride for what it was. It was a heck of a season. It was a lot of fun. And we've got some good seasons to come, being so young. You know, so let's just get off the Mick needs to be fired stuff and Mick can't win the big games uh, narrative. It's it's dumb <laughs> because you enjoy the season for what it was. Exactly. Yeah, because like you said, I mean, college basketball is completely different than than the NFL. I mean, he's had – Lewis has had several times of getting the playoffs and never winning – or Cronin mm-hmm. has won a, a game or two in the tournament. So yep. it, is, it is different. Yep. Now, now, if Cronin would have gotten there and always lost in the first round, yeah, I could yeah. Start, start seeing a comparison. You know, but, I mean, they did beat Kansas State, and they have beat other yep. teams in the past. So, yeah. Yep. Very true. So well, sorry for my rant. Sorry for my rant. No, no, no. That's perfectly fine. Shoot. I feel Sometimes better now. Hey, that's that's what this is supposed to be. It's supposed to be cathartic, you know. You're supposed therapy, to get off. And, yeah, exactly. Get your thoughts out there. Well, yeah. for the uh, Growing Truth Radio Network and the UC Bearcats on the prowl, as always, uh, James Ernest and Mark Fightmaster signing off. <laughs>